Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to monitor domain controller locator process using Wireshark. How does client computer locate the based and closest domain controller? The answer is something called DC locator process. The process that a client computer or application uses to contact the closest available domain controller within an active directory domain is called the DC locator process. DC locator is an algorithm that runs in the context of the net logon service on the client computer. It relies on DNS name resolution and AD sites and subnets configuration for the identification. Sites are often linked by slow network connections which might cause slowness with cross-site communication with Active Directory. DC Locator is a critical because it minimizes the impacts when a domain controller is not available. And it also reduces network latency and unnecessary network traffic between sites by locating the closest domain controller. Now we know that DC Locator is very important. The main question is how we know that it's working as expected inside our domain. The answer is by capturing packets using Wireshark packet capturing tool. This will show you the DNS traffic between client and DNS server and also the LDAP traffic between client and domain controller server. For this demo, we have single domain active directory forest named msftwebcast.com. In our domain, we have two Windows Server 2022 domain controllers. In this example, the client computer and the domain controllers belong to the same active directory site. As you can see, I have renamed the default active directory site to Surat Azure Active Directory site. Our both domain controllers are currently stored under Surat HO site. The subnet associated to Surat HO site is also created 172.18.72.0/24. Let's use Wireshark to capture DC locator process packets. I have already downloaded and installed the Wireshark packet capturing tool on our domain controller for this demo. On domain controller, launch Wireshark packet capturing tool. Let me maximize this and let's start capturing packet in Wireshark on Ethernet adapter. Let's go to client computer. Uh, let's resume client computer which is currently paused. Click on other user. Let's log into this client computer using the account of our domain administrator. The domain administrator user account is able to log in successfully. Let's go back to domain controller. Uh, let's stop the packet capturing process. We also want to save this packet capture for future reference. Let's click on file and click on save. Let's save it on desktop. I have given name TC locator process packets. Click on save. In the filter, type ip.addr is equal to is equal to 172.18.72.62 and hit enter key. This will only display packets from the IP address 172.18.72.62. This is the IP address of a Windows 10 client computer. The first step is to perform the DNS discovery. The net logon service of the client computer locating the domain controller ask DNS what are the registered SRV records for the domain msftwebcast.com. Keep in mind our domain name is msftwebcast.com. This is the first packet for DNS. Double click the DNS query packet. Let me maximize it. Expand DNS and expand queries. Now expand query section. We can confirm that client is asking DNS for MSFT webcast domains registered SRV records. And this is the record which client is currently looking for. And the type we can see it is for server selection. Let's close the packet. 
In second step, DNS will return back with the all domain controllers available in the msftwebcast.com domain. This is the answer packet from our DNS server. Let's double click on it. Let me maximize it. Let's expand answers. As we can see, the DNS server responds with a list of registered DNS records that match this request. The record contains the list of domain controllers within the AD domain. In our case, we have two domain controllers, ws2022-dc01 and ws2022-dc02. Both are listed in the answer. If no records are available, then the domain location fails. Client will choose one of those domain controller servers in the second step according to priority of each DC server and wait. Be aware that the client will choose the lowest priority number. And if all servers have same priority, the client will randomly choose an SRV record according to wait. In our case, the priority of both domain controller is zero. And also wait is same, which is 100. Close the packet window. In third step, Client will ask DNS again to resolve the chosen DC server's hostname to IP address. We can see that the client is asking for the IP address of FQDN ws2022-dc01.msftwebcast.com. In the fourth step, the DNS server checks the host record of the domain controller and responds with the IP address. We can see the DNS query response the IP address of ws2022-dc01.msftwebcast.com domain controller is 172.18.72.50. Once the IP address of the domain controller is known, the client sends a LDAP ping as a way of detecting that the domain controller is in fact handling request and determining the characteristics of this domain controller. The LDAP ping, also known as connectionless LDAP and is sent over UDP. Click on connectionless LDAP packet. Here we can see the connectionless LDAP protocol. This is LDAP message for search request for root base object. Uh, we can see the hostname of the client computer as well as the DNS hostname of a Windows 10 client computer and it is looking for the DNS domain, which is msftwebcast.com. Under attribute description, we can see the information about net logon. Let me close it. After each packet is sent, the client waits for a response, and if no response is received, it sends a packet to the next domain controller. The client continues this process until it receives a valid response that specifies the requested services or has tried all of the domain controllers. The LDAP ping is a LDAP root DAC search to the domain controller looking for an attribute called netlogon. The netlogon looks up the client IP address in its subnet to site mapping table by finding the subnet object that most closely matches with the client's IP address. The domain controller server inspects the query and returns the net logon result. In the response, we can see the name of the site in which the current domain controller is located. In our case, it is in Surat HO Active Directory site. Upon receipt of the LDAP search result entry, the client validates the capabilities written by the domain controller. That packet will be here. This is the LDAP query from our client computer to our domain controller. Here we have the information search request 2 for the root base object. And here we can see the information which client is currently looking for. This is for supported capabilities. Now our domain controller will send a response to that query. And here we can see LDAP protocol. And this packet is coming from our domain controller. Here we can see the information about the supported capabilities. This information is provided by our domain controller to our client computer. Here we can see the attribute value that this DNS server is currently in Surat Active Directory site. 
all the supported information and supported ALDE policy information will be shown in this packet. We can see the partial attribute list supported control information is also here. So there's a lots of bunch of information will be available under this response packet. If the capabilities written by the domain controller are incompatible with the requirements specified by the invoker of the locator algorithm on entry, the client must select another domain controller from the list of domain controller SRV records written earlier. The client also decides whether to use the current DC or to look for a closer option. In our example, the client computer and the selected domain controller belong to the same Active Directory site. In this situation, the selected domain controller provides the client computer with the site name, which is Surat HO Active Directory site in our case. The client computer catches the name of its Active Directory site and the name of the used domain controller. The selected domain controller will be used as long as it is available. The Windows computer no longer needs to redo the localization process each time it needs to communicate with the domain controller. Let's go to our Windows 10 client computer. Open Run menu, type CMD and hit Enter key. At command prompt, type command nl taste slash dsgapdc colon msfttwebcast.com. Here, msfttwebcast.com is our domain name. Press the enter key to execute the command. The output of this command shows DC the client is authenticated to, site the client is located, and site the DC is located. Check the value for our site name and DC site name. It will be Surat HO Active Directory site. Type ragedit and press enter key to open registry editor. Let's see the client computer Active Directory site catch information in registry. How do we maximize it? Expand HK local machine, expand systems, expand current control set, expand services, and look for the service name NAT logon. Click on parameters. Check the value of dynamic site name Ragandry. As we can see, it is Surat HO as we have verified it earlier in command prompt. By using this process, a Windows client computer locate the closest domain controller when it needs to communicate with Active Directory. However, this process will work efficiently only if Active Directory sites and subnets are maintained properly. I have tried my best to explain the domain controller locator process in Windows Server Active Directory. That's all for the video on how to monitor domain controller locator process using Wireshark packet capturing tool. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.